PeachTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Peach Tools. Awesome to see you here again today. Hey, beautiful day here in paradise as per usual. Hey, today I've got a treat for you fellas. If you're just learning to MIG weld with gasless wire and you're having a bit of an issue with it, stick around and I'll show you the three best tips that I've learnt when I started learning to weld with gasless wire. So guys, if your first attempts at flux school welding or anything like mine look like this, with my three easy steps that I taught myself, it can look like that in a matter of five minutes without even altering anything on your machine. Once you get your machine set up, this weld here was made with exactly the same settings as this weld here. Now it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it sure as hell beats the bottom one. Yeehaw! So let's get into it. Pete's three easy steps for easy peasy lemon squeezy welding. Anyway guys, same as usual, you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day at peachtools.com and let's get into it. Let's get you welding like a pro in under five minutes. So as you can see here guys, there's uh, three different welding attempts here. Um, like I say, it's all done with the same machine, exactly the same settings. It's just that there's different characteristics in the way these things are welded. Now the first thing that I reckon is this here is the wrong wire speed and it's probably the wrong stick out as well. And what I mean by stick out is this. Now if you don't know guys, stick out is the amount of wire that's coming out of your nozzle at any one time. So see you that, we've got quite a bit out there. Now they say about an inch, half an inch to an inch. I normally do about three quarters of an inch actually. Well, only about three quarters of an inch. Now you're going to say to me, how the hell do you know what's three quarters of an inch when, you, when you're welding? Well, it's, it's basically by feel, guys. I mean, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And guys, if you can hold it about three quarters of an inch from your work all the time, and that takes a bit of a knack to get, get used to that, but you will after a while. It's the same as anything. Once you get used to it, you say, how the hell, why didn't I do that like that in the first place? But uh, like I say, about three quarters of an inch there. Now you'll find, guys, if you've got any more than three quarters of an inch, it goes like this. What will happen is you'll extend it like so and then the, this part of the wire here gets cold and basically what you'll do is heat up the end and it'll snap off all the time. You also must remember that this wire here is conducting electricity and then you touch it on your steel and it burns the end off and that's what makes your weld puddle and then you keep burning it and burning it and burning it. So the further back you get like this, the less penetration you're going to get and the less heat and it just isn't going to work. Now I see a lot of new welders they have the wire speed coming out way too fast, like this, and holding the torch way too far backwards. And all you're doing is getting puddles. So you're getting those droplets there, so you're not even welding, it's just putting... See, we're just getting the balls here, it's just boiling up, and you're not even getting any constant sort of heat in there. This is what this is as well, guys. Boiling, it's just boiling up rather than actually making the molten metal on the two parts joined together. So tip number one guys is to stick out how much your wire is sticking out and your wire speed. That's what I would say. So now you're saying well that's all very well Pete but how the hell do you get the wire speed and the stick out right? Well first of all you will like I say you want about three quarters of an inch on here. So we'll cut that off to about three quarters of an inch. Pretty hard to do with my old big gloves on but anyway like so. We've got our three quarters of an inch wire stick out and now the speed so what we'll do is I'll just run a bead along a piece of flat plate and we'll see what it feels like if it feels like when you're hitting your plate it's pushing your gun back like so then your wire speed is too fast for your voltage so you either got to turn your voltage up or turn your wire speed down depending on what you what how thick you're welding right Let's give it a crack, Nigel. Give it a crack. And that's disgusting. See that, guys? See what's happening? See what's happening there? We've just got wire coming out here. See that wire there, guys? It just can't consume all the wire because I either haven't got enough power or I've got my wire going too fast. So if I turn my wire speed down, we'll see what happens. Right, we'll give it another go. See what happens. And it's better, see that? See how that's better, it doesn't jump around all over the place because the wire is now getting consumed into the weld puddle here. Yeah, it's much better now guys. That 
at one speed guys are surprisingly easy to do you only have to do it two or three times and you'll feel in the gun whether it's behaving like it should do if it's pushing you back you've got way too much wire or you haven't got enough power so what you need to do is just put a nice balance there which you see it only took me one attempt there it's not perfect but it's perfect enough to weld at the moment now the next step that I've got for you guys is the angle you hold your torch I mean it might sound pretty simple but if you're on the wrong angle it won't weld what I like to do is have my torch on about this sort of angle here as you can see not directly up and down like that and not too flat like that I just go about halfway in the middle there and um, I find that that suits me better if you go on about that angle there it's fine if you go anything above that I don't like doing that because I just, just don't seem to get the penetration so it all depends on angles here I'll show you just tack it there and we'll tack it down here just so it holds it like so now if I go directly up and down like that one that's a pain in the bum because you can't control what you're doing you can't see what you're doing either because you're right on top of the weld puddle you just can't see what you're doing so what I like to do is come down on an angle like this so that you can see your weld puddle and you can pull away from your weld puddle you're not trying to push into your weld puddle you're just getting your weld puddle and you're bringing your weld puddle towards you like so I'll show you like so and a bit of wire here that I didn't cut off properly because I was just too lazy but uh, you know how it is pop the slag off it I don't know if you can see I started directly on top of it there then I started pulling it towards me and you can see it here starting to, to spin out it looks quite good and by the time I got down here it would be quite a good weld so let's continue on with that for a little while guys Once again we're just running down the seam that we want to weld. Now I'm just a hobbyist welder, I don't know all the, the technical things for all this, but I just do what I do. See that guys, it is definitely stuck together. Blind man will be pleased to see it. I've always welded with CO2, it's just the last year I've started to learn how to use this um, flux shielded wire. So that's tip two guys, run an angle like so, and so you can see, once again, you can see your weld puddle. There's nothing worse than you can't see where you're welding, and if you can't see where you're welding, you're going to make a cock up of it, there's no doubt about it, because you can't see what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's like asking a blind man to drive, it's not going to happen. So, on this angle here, and follow it down beautifully, and just keep welding into your weld puddle just keep putting more and more material into that puddle and just follow it all the way down to your weld and you'll be welding in no time whatsoever so that's tip two and the last tip I've got for you guys is to be comfortable with your welding habits and what I mean by that is like even your helmet here when I first started my helmet didn't fit me properly and uh, it was forever falling down in front of my eyes and it was just a pain in the ass so make sure you've got your helmet adjusted properly so it sits correctly and you can actually see through it which is a really really good bonus when you're welding you can actually see what you're doing and uh, next thing guys it's the way you hold your torch basically not only the angle like I showed you before but if you can hold your torch with one hand like this and I don't know if you do like me but you can't weld straight with one hand because you start to shake so what you want to try and do guys, the hand that you're holding your welding torch in, try and balance it with your other arm or lean on something so that you're not 
flopping around in the air like this. Um, if I could show you something like this. When you're welding like that, see I'm leaning that on my arm and I've got a lot more control. If I take my arm away, then I'm all over the place. You end up going like that and you can't really control where your weld puddle's going. But if you're leaning on your other arm or you lean on something, you can actually control where you're going. It just gives you a lot more stability because you've got something to lean against. So if you try this free end, guys, you end up shaking all over the place. Can't really control what you're doing. But if I lay my arm here and then weld across this other glove, it gives me a whole lot more control and stability. See that? See that? You just get a hell of a lot more control. Or another way to do it is like this. I find holding it like that a lot better because you can just get a whole lot more control. So you're leveraging off here and you're steering with this one here. As you can see, the last one here is a hell of a lot more control than flopping around like this. Anyway, guys, there are my three tips for what they're worth. So they certainly helped me out when I was learning. Um, and that hand control was really, really important as well. It makes a huge difference to your welding if you've got control over your handpiece. Anyway, guys, same as usual. You like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day to me at peachtools.com. Also, check out the video in the description that I'll put when I first started welding without gas about a year ago, my very first attempt. Have a look at that video, it's a bit of a laugh. Anyway guys, nice to see you. Come back again next week for some more useless information. See ya!